past 20 years. Martin's current venture is FON, an innovative Wi-Fi startup founded in February 2006 and headquartered in Madrid, Spain. FON's mission is to make Wi-Fi universal by creating a unified global community of members who share connectivity. The FON community has over 8 million members and has become the world's largest Wi-Fi community. And his topic is the problems with sharing. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, to start on a positive note, uh, I, I, I just heard that we had 8 million members, but now we have 12 million. So, that happened in, since they last uh, gave out the script. I, uh, we've been growing especially a lot in France, where uh, we've, we've been partnering with SFR. Now, this talk is going to be about the sharing economy because that, that's what FON is. Uh, FON has become the largest Wi-Fi network in the world. Here in the UK, we work as BT FON, and we become the largest Wi-Fi network in the world through a concept of sharing, where you share a little Wi-Fi at home and you roam the world for free. But this presentation is not about the sharing economy in the sense of what a wonderful thing it is, because it is a wonderful thing, but it's about the obstacles that companies face in the sharing economy, the obstacles which can be summarized with one phrase, which is that whatever you have, you think is yours until you want to share it. And when you want to share it, you discover that many times it's not yours, or it's not as yours in the way you thought. Um, some activities you can share without any problem. Um, for example, your skills. If you want to teach somebody to play guitar in exchange for somebody to teach you yoga, that's not a problem. If you want to teach somebody a language like Buzu, that's not a problem. Somebody teaches you a language, you teach them a language. But many activities, for example, if you want to share your music, you want to share your videos, you want to share a lot of, a lot of different things, you will find that they're not as easy as I teach you English, you teach me Spanish. That there's a lot of skills that we uh, may want to share and we can share, but there's a lot of goods that we think are ours and they're not really ours. And that is one of the issues we're going to talk about today. So what I did is I built a home, and I used this as, as an example of all the things you could possibly share in a home and why sharing can be a problem, right? And so uh, here you have the first one, which is the obvious one, which is your music. And as you know, there's been a lot of people that have been uh, got into legal trouble for sharing their music and, and sharing file to file, uh, peer to peer. There's been an, an endless argument. I happen to live in a country, Spain, that doesn't penalize file sharing, but sharing has gotten a lot of people into trouble. Um, as a result, there's been new companies that were established. So the first companies that got into trouble, uh, Napster, Kazaa, and then the, a set of companies came up, which kind of tried to work with the owners of the content, like Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, um, in, which, in which you were able to obtain a music service, which is something that you couldn't do before. But the sharing economy in terms of music basically failed. People were not allowed to share files. They were not allowed to share music. And the services that were established were established by the content rights holders giving you the music, but not actually sharing. SoundCloud is an exception. SoundCloud is a service that I personally love. I'm sure a lot of you like too. SoundCloud allows you to share because a lot of the music that's put on SoundCloud is music that's been generated by the user. Having said this, SoundCloud constantly runs into problems about sharing because sampling and DJs make music with segments that are not actually theirs according to record labels. Um, our own case of Wi-Fi. So we become the largest Wi-Fi network in the world sharing Wi-Fi, but 
this is the, like the happy ending. Now we have 12 million users and we're a fantastic global network. But at the beginning, a lot of people, Forbes, for example, wrote an article that predicted our demise and predicted that we would be shut down very quickly uh, because sharing Wi-Fi was not allowed. And, and in fact, if you now use BT, which is our partner in the UK, BT changed the ter terms of service to accommodate phone before you couldn't do that. Now, there's other things that you think are yours, like your books, that you want to share. And you find that sharing books also leads to a lot of problems. And you say, why? Because there have been libraries. You would say libraries are book sharing uh, places. Libraries have been around for, for uh, hundreds of years. You could actually, libraries could buy a copy and then lend this copy to everybody who went to the library. And yet in digital form, to share books brings a lot of copyright issues. And there's companies that are involved uh, in book rental, textbook rental, but these companies, uh, in this case, uh, Buka Buka has been called a pirate bay for textbooks, and there's, there's, a, there's again this sense that you bought a textbook, you paid a significant amount for it, 30 euros, 50 euros, and you still can't share it, right? And there's, there's, a, there's a trend by the copyright owners to try to make it difficult to share. The other thing that you could say it's truly yours is your money, right? You should be able to share your money. Why, why there should be a problem sharing your money? And yet, a lot of the companies that have been involved in peer-to-peer -peer money lending have had tremendous regulatory problem. It turns out that your money is yours, but your money is not yours when you want to share it because there's a lot of regulations. Another very good example is selling shares in your startup. Selling shares in your startup is something that you can do, but haven't you wondered many times, why doesn't Kickstarter, why does Kickstarter sell a product and Kickstarter doesn't sell the shares in the company that will make this product? Now that is because of regulation. Even though you would be a willing buyer of the shares, and the company that will make the product is a willing seller of the shares, that transaction doesn't happen. So even though a lot of new companies could start in Kickstarter, what happens is Kickstarter is, is being used to demo a product, to show that you have orders. So you then go to qualify investors that become investors in your company but you can't ask the average person to become an investor in your company. The sharing, even your own money, what you can do with your own money, the government stands on the way of you deciding to invest in a company because to invest in a company, you have to be a qualified investor and it's illegal to solicit money in many countries. By the way, it's more illegal in America than in Europe. In Europe, there are commercials on TV that companies put out when they sell their shares. Those commercials are illegal in America. So these laws in the USA, so these laws are not always the same. And there's many companies that are being super successful at this, like the Lending Club. But they have to overcome a lot of obstacles before two people can get together and be a borrower and a, and a lender. A lot of legal obstacles had to be overcome. So, your videos is another very important issue that, I mean, YouTube was built on user-generated content, but then the problem arose when somebody would take an episode from The Simpsons or Lost or any kind of TV series, they would put out a clip of this episode, and then the whole thing started. You wanted to share something that you thought it was fun. Or, for example, you wanted to share you did a, a video of your friend, but you put music of Maroon 5 in the background, and then that Maroon 5 background music created, they brought down your video because, but you're saying, hey, if I have a crying baby with some Maroon 5 music in the back, why can't I share that moment? We were just listening to 
whatever, the radio, there was this music in the background. But the moment that music in the background appears in the video, there's special software that YouTube has to detect that video and bring it down, right? Which is also something strange. It happened to me the other day with Facebook. Uh, Facebook took a video down that I put on my own two-year-old daughter, uh, whose name is Mia. So I chose to have a background music of ABBA, which was Mamma Mia. And that was taken down, even though it was only for my friends, right? So you say, hey, I want to share this, this video of my, my daughter, who's two and can sing Mamma Mia. And they bring it down on Facebook, right? I mean, it's just for my friends. It's obviously no commercial value, but then I can't share that moment. So there's a lot of issues that involve sharing your moment in a digital life with videos. Uh, this one is crazy, right? Your table, okay? You wanna share your table, just your table. And you wanna invite people over to eat, right? Even in Cuba, they have these services where people invite people over to eat at home. But there are legal issues involving, are you a restaurant? Are you not a restaurant? How many people can, invite, can you invite home? Do you charge them? Do you not charge them? Let's say you're starting to be a chef and you want to cook and you want to get paid and you want to learn how to be a chef and you want to have, and there's many companies that are involved with this but there are, again, legal problems because a lot of the tax collections of our society are involved about restaurants, and restaurants compete. They feel this is unfair competition, people at home cooking for other people. And there's, there's, so you say, hey, this is my home. Why can't people come over? But then there are these issues that, that come up. Is it taxable? Is it healthy? There's all these health laws. Are you meeting health requirements? Is your home clean enough to invite people over? And this, this sharing economy makes, turns your dining table into a restaurant. It turns your bedroom into a hotel. At least that's how regulators see. They, see, they don't see your dining table. They see a restaurant. They don't see your bedroom. They see a hotel. And that's where the problems start. This one relates to your research, your scientific research. And there's, let's say, science. Science is built upon sharing knowledge, right? Science, if there's open source software, science is open source in the sense that information, uh, information wants to be free, right? Information wants to be free. But then science is not free at all. And a lot of the publications of science can only be, even when you do your own research and you public in scientific journals, these journals are extremely expensive and they're sold only to libraries. As an aside, uh, I would like to share with you a story that when I was 18 and I was studying in New York at NYU, my first company took advantage of this situation. So, I was a, a student from Argentina, I had no money, I was in New York, I needed to make some money. And I found out that the books in the NYU library, that many books in the NYU library were extremely expensive, and I mean $10,000 expensive, $20,000 expensive. And many of these books were just directories, directories of things, for example, directories of the manufacturers, because this was before the internet, and before the internet, there were directories, right? And there were... So I started this company called Datum Trade Services, which was me, 18-year-old, at the library with a fax machine. And I would get a request over fax that said, I would like to find manufacturing equipment for, uh, I don't know, x-ray dental equipment. I would go to the library, do the search, send the fax, and charge $100. And I paid for a considerable amount of my education just researching my own library and selling this information to people in Latin America and in Europe who had no access to American library and who didn't want to pay $20,000 for a book. 
So now I'm maybe confessing that all my education was paid by committing a crime. I think by now it's too late and probably nobody would come and prosecute me. But it is extremely interesting how information, the use of information, you can have access to the library, but maybe it, it may be legal that you search and share this information. By the way, at that time, I never ever got into a legal problem for doing this. But now companies that want to do this in a large scale get into legal problems. Now, this one is, again, an example. There's a lot of companies like TaskRabbit. I don't know if you know them, but there's a lot of companies that have started along the lines so of people coming to your home and fixing things or cleaning or helping, people helping each other out which should be, and people exchange work, right? Well, in many countries, exchanging work is avoiding taxation. Like, especially in European countries, there's an extreme view of taxation. Countries like Germany and so on, where, for example, they tend to tax you on everything your company may give you, or the, the tax authorities are very close to anything that may be a taxable event. So if two people, if uh, somebody says, I clean your home and you fix my plumbing, and they exchange fixing the home for, for, for fixing, uh, cleaning the home for fixing the plumbing, that avoids taxation, right? Because the person who's cleaning the home is not paying taxes, the person who's fixing the plumbing is not paying taxes. So a lot of these issues in the sharing economy go against the way, the way taxation is organized around a country. Okay, your car, similar story. There's a lot of companies that want to, when you want to share your car, you can share your car without a driver, you can share your car with a driver, and, and there's, there's this company in California called Lyft where you, where you give people a ride and, and, the quest, and they pay you as a tip so you are not charged like a taxi driver, but you're actually becoming something like a taxi driver. So the sharing economy constantly runs into situations where you are perceived as a criminal even though you're doing the things that you're mostly normally doing, but when you're taking a friend on your car, it's fine, but if you're taking a stranger in your car, it may be a problem. Having said this, every example I'm giving you, there's companies that are doing extremely well, extremely well as part of the sharing economy, but they run into legal problems all the time. I mean, uh, companies like Uber runs into legal problems in, in main cities in New York, in Amsterdam, uh, 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 for share, for, the, there the question is hailing, hailing, like hailing a taxi, is, is using an app like doing like this? Because in New York City, if you want to have a car where people can, you can be stopped by people hailing, you have to pay $250,000 for a medallion. So when you have an application that becomes the medallion, the medallion has no value. And there's tens of thousands of taxis that have paid $250,000 just to have the right to go on the street to be hailed. And then when, you're, when you have Halo, let's say the application Halo, and you're hailing through an app, you're avoiding this. Airbnb, again, Airbnb has run into trouble in a lot of places. You want to share your house, you want to turn your house into a hotel. And there's a number of other companies, Localo, Rumorama, Nine Flat. They all face the same problem. The hotel industry says that these are hotels and they should be regulated like hotels and they should pay taxes like hotels. Personally, I don't think they are hotels. And actually, I think that there's a lot more people that come to London or go to Rome or go to Madrid or go to any other city because there's Airbnb, especially families which find it so difficult to go to hotels. 
I'm personally a father of six children, so I can share with you how difficult it is to go to a hotel with children. You cannot get like five hotel rooms, four hotel rooms. Airbnb is perfect. You just get an apartment, you take your kids, you take it. It's, it's another market, but that's not what people understand. And Airbnb runs into legal problems frequently because of these. And then there's a general issue of open source. Open source, which is such a fantastic, mostly European or originally more European movement, in which people share, share their work and share their software, constantly runs into patents. Like there's patents, there's a lot of open source work that the people, some people own patents, and there's a constant struggle between people who are sharing and people who are fencing, right? And this sharing versus fencing creates a great deal of problems in the case of open source. And so now it's, let's say you guys are starting companies in the sharing economy like I did. What can you do to fight the forces that want to stop you? So one of the things you can do is go around the companies that are against you and lobby the government. And that's what the sharing econ economy companies have done. The sharing economy companies have started an organization, for example, called Peers, in which they're all together trying to lobby governments in order to allow the sharing economy to happen. Now, Peers is an organization that was originally promoted by Airbnb and that is gathering, for example, I'm a member of Peers and a lot of companies Entrepreneurs or companies are members of peers because peers, because if you go to lobby about your own share in economy company, people say, hey, you're just lobbying for your interest. You just want your own share in economy company. So when all the share in economy companies get together in peers, peers represents the whole concept of sharing economy rather than, than you after your economic interest. And also, Europe, for example, which is a continent that has such high youth unemployment, not Germany, which is 7%, but Spain, let's say, where it's 50%. When you have youth unemployment, how are young people going to... The sharing economy opens the world to people under 30 who are on restricted budgets, many of whom who don't have a job. So the sharing economy is a way to make everything more affordable because everybody things get used again and again and again. Now, the other, pro the other solution to this problem is what we did at FON. What we did at FON was we, we went to the telecom companies and explained to them why sharing Wi-Fi was good for them, why sharing Wi-Fi was not like sharing music, that sharing music took the money away from the record labels, but sharing Wi-Fi, that if you had a rule that said share Wi-Fi at home and roam the world for free, connecting to other people, like-minded people who share with you, that in order to share, you need to buy, that somebody needs to buy a connection in order to share it, and they only share it with other people who bought a connection. And I show British Telecom, Deutsche Telekom, SFR, SoftBank of Japan, OE of Brazil, and all these companies who are now our partners and our investors. We even got these companies to be our investors by convincing them that phone actually made them money, that people who shared were less likely to churn, less likely that sharing was accretive, that it gave more value to everybody. So if you have a company like phone where there's a law that is against you, but the law goes against the economic interest of the people who they are supposed to protect, then what happens is you and British Telecom go to change the law, and then it's very easy. Now, I, in order to, in order to summarize what's happening here, I have no doubt that the sharing economy is here to stay, but what this talk wanted to accomplish is to give you a sense 
that every time you hear about the sharing economy, it's not so easy. That while some companies have it easy, and I gave the example of Buzu, where nobody else feels attacked because two people sh uh, teach each other languages, for the rest of the sharing economy companies, there's many unexpected legal problems, and everybody has to band together, help together in organizations such as peers to make the sharing economy a success. Thank you.